Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Daniel with Decano Electric. Today we are going to look at an RV plug that needs to be uh, installed. A customer wanted it. Um, I'll show you what needs to be done. I'll walk you through the process. It's not a complicated uh, process, but uh, there's a few things that you need to know. So let's get started. Um, but before we do, remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and leave me a comment. Alright, let's go. Alright, just like every panel, uh, usually they do have a knockout on the bottom. So what I'm doing here, I'm trying to uh, remove that knockout. It's not, uh, sometimes it's not easy, but uh, it's, uh, it's possible. Just a little bit of dedication and uh, the right tools and you should be able to break them out. Now if you don't, uh, if, you, if you can't break them out, uh, there's, uh, there's different methods, but in this case, uh, that thing uh, that just came out, uh, no problem. All right, and then I'm trying to um, fit the um, connector. Everything is going good. We're gonna uh, put it on the uh, conduit. It's a metal flexible conduit. It's called liquid metallic liquidite. And then we're gonna put the um, the nut inside there. So um, that is our next step to uh, install the nut. Uh, put the connector inside the uh, the hole there so it stays. We don't need to deal with that because the connector is a two piece. All right, and now we're going to try to uh, see how long the flexible needs to be cut. We're going to attach a little bit the conduit on the connector right there. Uh, we're going to get the box, get a uh, rough measurement to see how much we need. We're going to set the box on the wall and then um, we're going to measure it a little bit just to see how much uh, conduit we need. We're going to cut it with the flex, sorry, we're going to cut it with the grinder. And uh, the reason why I'm using the grinder is because there's that metal inside. Also, at the edges, we are cleaning the rubber outside because the uh, nut that needs to be put on the connector. Um, it's a little tight, so we have to clean that out. It's not, uh, it's not a big deal, but it, sometimes it, it, it does go in without cleaning that up, but it's a much easier process to uh, get, that, get that going in. And then we're going to put that seal, the yellow seal, then in the, uh, the part of the connector that attaches to the other side. And then we're going to tie this down with the, uh, with the channel lock. Alright, we have the wires. I have a 10 gauge wire that's going to go into the tube. Probably have a hard time pushing that inside, so I believe I'm going to take that out. It's easier to um, push the wire if you don't have it attached to the connector. And then here I'm going to try to push it out with the screwdriver. It's stubborn, but it's coming out. Alright, so the wire is out. I'm going to push it through the connector inside the panel. Now I have to bend a little bit so I can take it out of the connector. And then uh, run it just below those existing wires. It's not hard, but uh, it should be able to come out. And then I have some left over at the other end to connect the outlet, uh, the RV outlet. Alright, and I'm going to push as much as I need into the panel because the connection onto the breaker it's going to be uh, up above all the other breakers so um, I need quite a bit in that panel. I'm going to tighten that nut down, keep the flex, uh, the conduit in, in place, tight the uh, neutral and the grounding in there. Now obviously they can go on the same bus uh, this is a main panel, not a sub panel. If you have a sub panel, you have to separate the ground and the neutral. Um, some some would say, hey, you're not supposed to put the neutral and the ground together. Put them on a separate screw. I don't have a separate screw. Um, I don't have a, another space in there, so going together is not going to affect it. It's, it does the same thing. It's on on the 
from screw knob, it does the same thing. In here we're gonna slide in the box and then tighten that nut on the on the box a little bit so we can uh, place the box on the wall, make it level nice and even. Now we do have these uh, big siding uh, that go uh, they go horizontal. What I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to uh, put the box right underneath that siding. I'm using inch and a half, I believe two inch, I'm sorry, two inch leg screws um, just to hold it in place. I believe I put four, four of them there. Get the level, get the box level, and then uh, <coughs> the first screw that I'm going to use, I'm just going to put it in to be able to get the box level. Now it stays in place, I like it. The conduit's going to go parallel with the other with the other conduit. Good. Get that box level, and then want to put some more screws in there. Right, we got all the screws in there. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to strap the conduit on the wall. I'm using three quarter inch straps, one hole straps. I'm using the same screws, make sure the, the conduits are parallel, looking good. Use the lag screws and have a 516 head on that drill. Nice and secure. Alright, we're going to do another strap. wood siding there so that's that's really easy to put in those screws and we're gonna tie that nut down a little bit better to seal that inside so the water doesn't go in now we got that down set the camera in a different angle so it doesn't move anymore we're gonna cut the wires and you want to put some um, uh, connectors on the end because the uh, screws on the outlet um, are the way they're done. It requires the the, um, the yellow connectors that we're going to crimp on the wires. I believe they're called fork connectors, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to crimp them down, make sure we have a good contact, do a really good crimp on those, and then uh, we shouldn't have any issues with the contact. And then the reason why I'm using those connectors is because we have stranded wire. The other uh, connector on the wire. Cut the grounding and then connect the uh, connect the wires onto the outlet. There's only two screws. Usually it doesn't matter, but in this case we <coughs> used the black wire on the right side. We, we, we added the black wire on the right side and the, and the white wire on the left side, just like a normal outlet. And then in this case, uh, right here, we are connecting the uh, grounding wire that comes from the panel onto the box. Alright, the next step is to install the plate that, con that contains the outlet. So the plate goes inside those two notches and then there's a screw that holds the whole plate onto the box and it's a really secure um, connection, not a problem with that. Now we're going to reroute the wire to go all the way up on top of the other breakers. You have to be careful always. Those bus bars are hot unless you like to turn off the power. 
In this case we don't have to because the house is running and there's only one breaker. But I do recommend cutting the power off by shutting the main breaker. The wire goes inside the breaker. There's only one hole on the breaker. If you have a 120, use our Zinsco breakers. They're not the greatest uh, tools in the shed, but uh, we have to use them since the breaker panel is an old Zinsco breaker. So we have to use them. They still sell them. They have new ones that you can buy. And then all they, all they have to just connect the right side and then snap them onto the bus bar. And then turn on the breaker. This way you should have 120 volts going down and 30 amps. That's going to run your um, RV without a problem. These RVs, they can be found at Home Depot or probably even Amazon. But I bought this one at Home Depot and you can tell we have 120 volts. Alright guys, this is it. That's the process on uh, how you install or how we installed a, um, a plug for the RV. Like I said, it's not, it's not hard. It takes a while. It took me about an hour and a half to do all that process. But uh, it came out really great. Uh, the customer is pleased. And then we'll keep doing this uh, kind of stuff. Um, until um, all the houses are connected. Alright. Thanks guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.